Hi, I'm Dan from Power and Control Electrical and Renewables. I'm just here to show you a system that we've installed comprising of a solid 6 kilowatt hybrid inverter, two 5 kilowatt pure drive batteries, EPS backup supply, so that means the house is powered in the event of a power cut, my energy hot water diverter, electric vehicle charger, and full Tigo optimization cloud system. We've also done a few added extras, which is Wi-Fi extension out to the garage, so the customer can get Wi-Fi in their garden, which in hand has given us all the connections to uh, hardwire, all the inverter, and the uh, battery system, and also the car charger, meaning you've got a seamless internet connection throughout. So this install comprises of 20 Tigo optimizers and that's an optimizer for each panel on the system. This means that every panel is working to its optimum. On a normal string system, the panel would only work as good as the worst panel on the system. So what that means, if it was shaded and there was one panel shaded out of six, every panel would work just as badly as that one shaded panel. These optimizers will make sure every panel works to its optimum and on this installation it is heavily shaded with chimneys, uh, overcoming power supplies, different orientations so this customer has opted to go for this from our advice. Also alongside that it runs on a Tigo cloud system which means we can go on a laptop, computer, phone and see how every individual panel is running, what shading it's got on it, how many watts it's producing at that given time or how many um, kilowatts it's produced per day or watts per day. So with this installation, we've uh, chosen to put a new sub-consumer unit in the garage. This is to power all the existing circuits that were already here. And then we have added a EV charge point circuit for the charger that's in. We've added a spare EV charge point circuit in for the future. Uh, the solar inverter is powered from here and the Tigo power supply. Um, all of this is individually fed by RCBOs, so this means in the event of any fault that only that one circuit would trip, meaning the customer would still have use of everything else. So we've carried out all ground works on this project also, which means all this block paving has been taken up. This is to provide a ducting that's come all the way through to this uh, consumer unit. So we've had all of this taken up from all the way around here, all the way down there and then along that grass over to the charge point there. So on this installation we've installed a pure drive 7 kilowatt charge point. This charge point will track the weather. It will make sure that the car is being charged in the most efficient way with any surplus solar. It will also make sure it's tracking any rate that you're on that might be the cheapest way to charge that car or a mix of both. So if the car it can see that the weather is, is good and it, the car's getting good charge, it will then top it up with the cheapest tariff possible. We have also managed to put a, a spare cable into this charge point route, which is hidden around the back here. And this is in case the customer wants to put an additional EV charger in in the future. And the reason we've done that is because all the groundworks have taken place along here, which have been carried out by ourselves. We have put a 50 mil duct in to um, back to the mains board or the, wherever the internet supply is and that's to make sure that it's future proofed. It's also got a hardwired internet connection to make sure that it's never going to go offline. Obviously with where it is, the distance from the house or any Wi-Fi, we've, we've chosen that that would be the best option so it will work seamlessly. So on this installation we've chosen to install a flush fit meter box for this customer. This is to match the existing one which is housing their smart meter and the Harvey which is receiving all the data for the uh, hot water diverter. When we move through into here, this is where we've chosen to put the supply for the solar inverter and all the, the sub mains that we've fitted in the garage. This has got everything labelled nice and neat so the customer's got no issue with anything should anything uh, be needed to be looked at in the future. If you were to pull down this switch, this would transfer the house onto the full backup supply mode. So meaning if they've, if they've had a power cut, it's going to run off purely the solar and batteries. Alongside that, we've made sure that it, it, it's meeting regulation and put an earth rod in the ground. So we're not depending on the DNO's um, earthing system. We're, we've got our own here, so it's, it's safe and up to regulation. So we're in the process of fitting 20 
Solfit 375 watt integrated solar panels on this installation. These panels are flush fitting, so we do both styles. Normally, the, the majority of the installs we do are on roof systems, which means you have a rail and a roof hook, so the panel sits on top of the tile. This installation is a bit more in depth. We've had to remove a, a, a majority of the tiles off this roof and then flush fit them in with this sole fit system. There's 14 panels going up here, three on this side, which hasn't been put in yet. We're just in the process of doing that and another 11 on this side. As you can see, there's a big chimney in the way on this project. So this is where the Tigo optimization comes into its own. Um, the shading on here is massive um, at different points in the day, but it doesn't mean you can't have solar, it just means we need to get around it in a certain way, and that's with optimization. Um, all the optimizers we've fitted on these projects are in the loft, so if anything was ever to go wrong with them or we need to check a panel's not working, we can just get into the loft and test each panel with ease, so there's no need to get a scaffold up to identify an issue if it's an optimizer gone down or a panel. So as you can see on this install, there's a great whacking chimney in the way, which is shading some of the panels at different times of the day. You can see the shading up there off that. This is where we fit optimizers to this system that ensures each panel is working to its optimum um, and not one panel being shaded is going to affect the whole install. So this is a My Energy Eddy. It's a hot water diverter. It will pick up all the surplus solar. So anything that you'd usually send back to the grid. Before it goes back to the grid, it will choose whether to heat up your immersion heater tank. The one we've got here has got two immersion heaters elements uh, connected to it, and it will firstly do the, the first ele element, and then once that's got up to temperature, it will choose to go on to the second element. Once they're both done, it will continue to go back to the grid, but you've made the most out of the excess energy that you've got. You can also set a timer on this and boost it to different times. So if you wanted to set the boost time for in, in the night on your cheaper tariff, you could do that if you know you're not going to get much uh, generation off the sun the next day maybe. Um, you can also app monitor this so it's all seen from the MyEnergy app which is really user friendly. 